Life in extreme poverty means life in which people are deprived of basic human rights, like the right for liberty or education. Children often have to work, but it doesn't always save them from starvation. The images of starving children are very powerful and are widely used in some countries to raise money for charity. But what is behind these pictures? What do we know about people who live in extreme poverty? Does the media tell us all the truth? Miriam Wilson studied representation of global poverty in European media and is ready to share her findings. Most stories present the poverty in developing countries as a local issue. It's just out there and the causes are local. And what I find lacking as a, in general as a, as a, a story when it comes to causes and, and, and solutions is how things are connected to historical uh, events, how things are connected to uh, the Western world. Such frames, I, I studied the, the, the framing of, of, of the stories, the frames that emph emphasis, uh, emphasize these aspects, they are not used very, very often in the, in the news. They are there, you'll find the stories, but they are, they are a minor minority. I think it feeds the perception of the public that, uh, again, uh, poverty in developing countries, it's, it's something that hasn't, it has nothing or not really to do anything with us. Uh, it's, it's, it's just out there. It's just something that is happening in Africa, it's happening in Asia. Um, and perhaps we can help by donating money to charities. Um, but the story of how uh, it is related to uh, actions of individuals or companies or governments um, in Europe, in America or in the West, uh, that is not really present in the media and also not very present in the minds of people. What are then the causes of poverty according to media coverage? Um, and a very important topic for the news media is bad governance in developing countries. And that's one of the, uh, I think I found that issue in a quarter to a third of the articles that make references to corrupt leaders, uh, corrupt officials, local conflicts, uh, such kind of things, strongly linked to the causes of poverty or, or, or the reasons for poverty not to end. Are there underreported regions? Yeah, in fact, a, a strange thing is that when, it, when it's about poverty in developing countries, um, most news is about Africa. But when you look at the number of people that are affected, uh, it's Asia. The majority of the extremely poor live in Asia, not Africa. Number-wise, poverty is mostly there. What is the general message we get from the media? Do we get the impression that we are successful in fighting poverty? Because economists have different opinions. Some economists say that over the past century, poverty levels have decreased. But other economists say that they still remain very high. For example, according to Oxfam, 1 in 10 people survive on less than $2 a day and go to bed hungry. The fact is that we are successful in fighting poverty, but the media will not tell you this story. Um, uh, what I looked at in my research is both news media, uh, by studying newspapers, and I also looked at communications from NGOs, like Oxfam, uh, and both sources of information are telling us that um, uh, there's a kind of enduring misery in developing countries. It's not that you'll never find the story about uh, progress, uh, those, those stories are there, but they are dwarfed by a much larger number uh, of stories that focus on the negative. And this is happening both in the news media and also in campaigns of development organizations. They will focus on things that go wrong. So Oxfam is right when it says that still one in ten people go to bed hungry, but they don't tell us that a few decades ago this was maybe three, four, five times as much. Do you see a problem here? Yes, uh, I, see a, I see a problem, because what I also looked at in my study is the perceptions of the general audience. How do they think about the situation in developing countries? And then we find that uh, only a, a small minority, in fact, is aware of the fact that poverty, the poverty trend is, is going down. The vast majority of people think that the problem has gotten worse. 
In your opinion, what are the main problems with the representation of poverty? We rarely see things that there's improvement, that there's progress in developing countries. And also um, a lot of attention for people's dependency on foreign help. Why do you think it happens? Journalists are hardwired for bad news. And things that go right, uh, it just isn't news. And what makes it even more difficult, for example, when you think of declining poverty or declining child mortality, these are slow trends. They occur gradually. So there's not a moment that this is suddenly news. It's slowly happening. Mm -hmm. And the media are just not very good at, at uh, forwarding such stories about slow trends. NGOs, um, they have a different purpose as the news media. They need to raise funds for, to fight the remaining poverty that is still out there and that is still a huge problem. They dedicate their time and their advertisement space in, in newspapers and magazines to tell you, to tell the audience that things are still going wrong and that we need money to solve the issues. They will not tell you that things are getting better because uh, if they do tell us that, then people might not donate anymore. Do you share this belief that other strategies won't work? I wish I could assure them that, oh, please just bring a positive message, it will help, but I don't know. Mm. Um, but my worry is, and this is, this is what we know, that um, when, when people hear messages of, of, of misery, they think, ah, they're overwhelmed. Mm. When they hear, like, so many children in poverty, children are dying. Exactly those phrases that many NGOs were used to, 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 uh, to, to make you donate, mm. also makes people uh, to, to disengage, because they're so overwhelmed, it's, like, hopeless. It's too big. What can we do? They feel powerless. While when they hear, like, um, more positive stories, uh, then you see people respond very, very different, differently. They'll, they'll feel more motivated again. Mm -hmm. and, and it feels that uh, they can really make a difference. How does the media report on NGOs that provide development aid? You know, from time to time there appear questions about the efficiency and transparency. For example, um, some people believe that the operational costs are very high. These are usually grossly overestimated by the general public. Uh, sometimes when I ask people that, no, well, if you donate one euro to Oxfam, how, how much of that euro do you think is going to Africa, to projects in Africa? Maybe I can ask you, what do you think? I would think like uh, 50 cents. Yeah, that's the answer that I mostly get. Uh, it'll be half. In fact, 85 to 90 cents goes to projects. But does the media generally criticize NGOs and their work? It's kind of story that, that sings around, but it's not perpetuated in the media. It's not a real big issue in the media. So when the media write about development aid, um, they mainly uh, discuss the effectiveness of development aid in general, more than specifically criticizing the aid sector. Do we get a sense that we are doing enough in fighting poverty? Uh, for example, Bill Gates is very active in fighting malaria. And in one of his talks, he said that there are more money put into boldness drugs than into fighting malaria, which is not very fair if you think about that, because nobody ever died from boldness, but malaria kills tens of thousands of people. And my question here is, uh, does the media give us these kind of comparisons? Because they could be very useful and helpful. Uh, in fact, I don't. <laughs> it, it may be a topic or in an opinion article. Okay, so what are your recommendations for the media and NGOs? To NGOs, uh, to British NGOs, um, recommendation is please rethink the need to use pitiful imagery. Mm -hmm. That's one. To all NGOs, um, try to find ways to, uh, to communicate progress. Let's show people that it has helped. Another recommendation is um, show initiative of local people. Um, show it in your visual material that, that the teachers, community workers, people there are active and don't portray them as, as if we as uh, white saviors uh, 
uh, have to bring about change. So these are some of the recommendations to, uh, to NGOs. Uh, to news media, uh, one recommendation as said, uh, try to find ways to, to emphasize, emphasize slow progress because that story is lacking. And maybe it sounds a bit strange, but another recommendation is um, find ways to counter the bad governance story mm. because it's so dominant and um, uh, hardly ever do you find a story about improving governance or peace or improving democratic institutions. That's also part of the slow progress story, but it, it really doesn't receive uh, much attention. Again, because I think the journalists are hardwired to, to hold power to account, to be critical, which, is, which they should do, they have to do. But I think there's a story that, that they are missing. <laughs>